Hey, I'm Turner Vinson. It's day three of my week of quarantined demos from my yard. It's 9 a.m. on day three. No time for chit chat. Let's get rolling. I haven't even painted yet, and I've already got paint on my head. The wind is really blowing hard today and it's it's mainly a blue sky but there's some clouds filtering across the sun so the como peaks are kind of going into clouds and coming out but i want to go for that really strong bright light that's hitting them painting these 9 by 12s is uh is a little challenging for me because i've been painting much bigger but you know in this idea of doing a demo every day for a week I thought I'd do myself a favor and not paint them too big, both for the sake of painting and then editing and how long the video is. But uh, I want to paint this much bigger, but we're gonna go small. And maybe it's even like a study for a bigger painting. That's how I'm gonna think about it. So I love this whole, I love this whole ridge of mountains, especially the second ridge, but I'm not going to try to get all of that in this. I'm just going to go straight for the for the Como Peaks, which are the, the ones on the right. And, and that house kind of silhouetted against them. And let's figure out how we're going to compose it. I'm thinking about coming all the way down to this field in front. I didn't even mean to make that mark, uh, but that's about where I want it. This field coming down, it's my neighbor's dirt road. And then there's kind of house here comes up and then the house is silhouetted maybe here. Let's try that. And that does allow me to get these second, the second row in a little bit. Comes up. And I'm putting these, these images of the scene for you to look at. But I always kind of hesitate to do that because I'm not, I'm not looking at that photo that you guys are seeing. So it's not like I'm trying to paint uh, exactly what you're seeing. It, you know, standing here in life, everything's a little different. It changes. Uh, I might push things around a little bit. So just as, as reference for you as you're watching, that photo that you're seeing, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly a slave to that to that exact thing. All right, let's see. I'm, I'm a little unsure if I like this, but let's keep going and, and find out. Let's see. trees over here some tree here all right I'm gonna pull in so there's some trees over here I'm gonna pull those in I think it'll help compositionally and there's some trees really just outside of my frame but I think it might help help my composition out to, to kind of move them over to the left just a little bit. Maybe like that. And then looking all the way to this foreground right here in front of me allowed me to put a dark, kind of a dark shape here in front. And I'm just going to go ahead and with the wet wash just block that in. So as I mentioned, this is day three of uh, five days of demos from my yard. So if you didn't see the other two, I'll put a link up in the top right for you to check those out if you want. All right. I kind of like that. I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. And this is even a good, a good way of, of kind of, I'm glad that I'm painting this small. I'm not into it big, feeling like like I'm not that excited about it and I'm about to spend a lot of time on a big canvas. But a small canvas, you know, I don't mind putting in the time kind of as an exploration. 
All right, I'm squinting at my scene, and a lot of the darks that are happening are, are houses or structures. And uh, man, the wind is really, really blowing hard. So I'm gonna do all my dark shapes really quickly, and then, and then do the hillside. And I wanna make sure I keep all of this dark enough to allow for my, my mountains to really pop. So let's go for the dark, the dark shapes. And this is kind of classic, in my mind, classic Montana, where obviously big, amazing mountains, and then just these hillsides with, with houses just sprinkled, sprinkled through. And of course, you know, you gotta have a, a couple of old trucks and a RV, some stuff to uh, decorate the yard. I'm not so much drawing all of the, the shapes of the houses as much as I am trying to hint at where, where the dark shapes are. And there's a house, my closest, the closest house right in here somewhere, which I'll kind of obscure with trees. And that's not really so much of a dark shape, but I might, I might push it into the darks. And then those trees on the hillside these trees into the dark, into a dark. I'm going to come all the way forward to this hillside right in front of me. Okay. Jump straight to the, uh, the lighter fields, pastures, but like I said, I want to make sure I keep them, keep them dark. shift them a little bit, kind of gradate it down. And it, it is actually what's happening as well. This field here, it's closer to me and it's just a little bit lighter. This is a road and there's kind of plants and bushes and stuff going back there. I'm squinting squinting and just covering up a few things. Some areas where the canvas is still showing. And I'm just gonna lighten this up a little bit. I think that might be too light. I still want it to feel like it's lit. But really I should probably get my mountains in there before doing much more to make sure my values are are working the way I want them to, to work and really pop off, let that pop back there. Okay, I'm just going to kind of mass in some of this here, push it a little darker.
I'm going to skip the mountains for now and go to the sky. Titanium white, some of my celestial blue. I just kind of skipped through my thalo and my ultramarine. And I'm going to make sure this kind of gradates down from the top. Push it darker. Might be too dark, but we'll we'll adjust it. Coming down to this nice, it's kind of that, you see that nice clean blue in the morning. Light, light blue. Oops, I didn't want to come that low. There's clouds there. This little piece here is, is what holds the canvas on. And uh, I just kind of move it out of the way, get what's behind there, push it back down. In uh, my other two videos from this week, I've talked about my some of my materials, my supplies, my canvas, I mean my, uh, my easel, my brushes, etc. All right, I'm squinting, looking at my canvas, looking over there, and I'm gonna go for the, the mountains in shadow. going with uh, number eight. It says eight, but that is not an eight. Filbert. It's more like a four, two or four. I don't know why, why they'd call that an eight, but like a number four filbert. Two, two, four filbert. Squinting, squinting. All right. Touching into my Thalo and uh, Ultramarine Blue. I want to go light enough. And the uh, Thalo is a really strong blue. Uh, that is kind of reminiscent of that, that kind of hazy blue that you get. And then I'm just mixing some of this warm color that was already on here. Mixing it in there just to dull down that blue a little bit. I'm really looking at that second ridge, which is coming right out through here and I can tell right now that's not dark enough it's interfering with my sky all right that's too saturated squinting this is one of the problems I'm having I'm squinting way down and I need to to make sure I go it's dark enough on those distant mountains. And those are tricky areas where you tempted to go light, but you have to continue to judge judge everything against each other. And uh, as you've probably noticed, I am all about getting stuff in there and then and then shifting, um, rather than being super careful to <laughs> to nail it the first time. I'm okay. I'm okay with with getting the idea down, and then and then making the adjustments. It's the beauty of of oil paint is the the flexibility that it has. Okay, not not so sure. It's feeling a little. Just got, just got some work to do. I'm gonna go for a cloud color, uh, a gray. I often find my gray from ultramarine blue and a brown, which is my burnt umber. And uh, it's a nice base to start with and then shift your gray from there. Warm, cool. When you're first starting out, gray is a hard color, hard color to come by. Um, but that's how I often find it. Here comes a little boy. Did you make me a card? All right, you guys are gonna get the full display of uh, two, two and a half year old creativity. All right, bring it over here. A 
Open it. All right, I'm gonna open it for everyone to see. Oh, you glued it shut. Nice. Yeah. Gotta break it apart. Oh, wow, buddy. Mm. That is impressive. Wow. Is that the wagon? No. No? <laughs> yeah, it is funny. I love it. Good job, buddy. All right, I'm gonna finish my painting. Bye. Gotta love uh, two-year-old drawings. We have a stash of drawings. We're trying to decide what what to keep and what to let go of. Hey Moses, what you doing, buddy? All right, I'm squinting. I I think this cloud color is helping. Um, let's uh, just continue. Let's see, I'm gonna put this in there. So the clouds, I'm deciding that I, I really want the, the, the snow popping on this. So I'm pushing these clouds maybe a little darker than they are, but to, uh, to keep room value-wise for the snow, which I'm kind of delaying a little bit. And I, we should probably jump in there and address them. All right, and let's do that. So I'm going to really pop it with some color, with, with value, not so much color, but it's going to be white with just a little bit of warmth in it. Um, and let's see, let's see what happens. I think this this will work but then we're gonna have to to give the shadows in there to really make that to really make that read and while I'm there I'm gonna there's this this back ridge is just kind of there's just some light hitting That's not really reading Charlie right. Revised version of the card coming back. Oh, you cut it? So now you cut it in two? That's a really good decision. Good job, buddy. <laughs> All right, squinting shadows on the distant mountain. mountain comes down and the second one comes up here and it's a little more in shadow at least at the moment it is it has this ridge that comes down casting shadows this way and then there's just this patch of snow in shadow right here which is going to be a little lighter Could probably use a little of that Lighten that a little more. More. Yeah, that helps. And that will help back here too. Maybe not. We'll address that in a minute. Squinting, squinting. Some of this shadow comes all the way down to the side of this house. I made the mount. I, I think I, I might have made the mountains a little, just a hair taller than they actually are, but 
I'm alright with that. There's a the slightly different value in the light. It's like there's a plane this way that's not quite as bright as the plane that's facing the sun more face on. So I'm gonna try to just, it's very, very subtle. I think it might help. That's not subtle enough. Might be okay. It's variety, subtle, subtle variety. Comes down right next to that house. A little light coming up here. All right, and then the shadow on this third mountain. These are such like picturesque calendar mountains. You know, for me, they're they're a little too perfect. You know, it's uh, like a friend of mine said that painting in Switzerland is spectacular, but you almost feel like you're on a uh, you know, it's like a fairy tale. It's like a golf course. It's so everything just seems so perfect, and sometimes that can be can come across in a painting as a little as a little kitsch, you know, a little just a little too perfect. Um, which I guess, like Switzerland, if it's just amazingly beautiful and perfect, then it has its it's justified. But I, you know, with these mountains, I I like because they do feel so so perfect. I like to make sure there's enough kind of rawness and in how I treat them so that they don't feel too much like uh, you know just like a the pretty picture you know you want them to still feel like these grand huge monstrous mountains that you know if you were to climb would be a daunting task I'm, I'm uh, pretty happy with how it's going this this area is still just a little too a little too plain. Needs a few, a few shifts and changes in it. Kind of firm up some of these shapes. Thing. I think it'll help to go ahead and address the sky around it, around the mountains to get the shape, their shapes secured. There's light, there's light kind of coming right around here. And then it casts that shadow that we painted right there. Squinting. It's uh, it's going in the right direction. It's not it's not perfect, but uh it's in the right direction. Right, I'm gonna skip around a little bit. There's a little bit of the sky showing down here. The clouds are kind of shifting around. And this ridge on the far left has these kind of steps in it. And they're They're being hit with light. I think that needs, it just needs a little bit of a darker, a darker edge on it. It will help. A 
I'll often do some edges like this that are, are some almost like outlines and then soften them in a few places to help to help it read a little better. But you don't want to be too almost manufactured with it, you know. You got to keep it Nature is so has so much variety in it. So you don't want to be too too clean or too too simple. a little all right squinting squinting this is a little too much a little too much light it's bringing my eye over here a little more than I want to okay squinting I'm wanting to leave the mountains but I keep I keep coming back to them All right, let's address some other things in the painting. So these, these structures and houses, I want to be as subtle, as subtle with them as possible. And that, that house on the hill that's being silhouetted, the roof is just a slightly lighter and warmer value than, than the, the rest of the house. So if I can just make that simple shift, that might be enough for that house. Maybe. I think a little lighter could do. Squinting. Yeah, I think I can leave it like that. I'm not saying I'm going to leave the whole thing like that, but the uh, I think that helps. That differentiates the roof. I'm going to skip down to this structure right here. It's kind of a modern shape look looking building. Tall slanted roof. Bottom is darker right here. I think it can push even darker. And then this left side is just a little lighter. And there's a lot of stuff around this house. Um, it's not it's not junky. They just have a lot of things, as any good good Montanan does. Sorry, the camera shut off again. I'm working on this structure here. I really need an assistant. I need someone to come. Someone needs to come be my camera person. So I'm working on this house here and I put the window in first time and it was great. But then I kept messing with it. I messed it up. So I just blocked it back in with this, this side of the house and I'm going back in with just a little spot of, of color. So trying to suggest a window. Uh, it's not perfect, but we're gonna, we're gonna leave it for now. Right to the right of this uh, structure is a tree, and that tree is pretty dark. I'm going to put that in there. And it's all of these little elements, you know, not having to put all the elements, but it's these things that really start to make it feel, feel you know, like I'm referencing real life um, you know when you're sitting in your studio trying to invent something you know unless you've been studying nature for a long time and what's actually happening out in the real world um, if you haven't done that enough and you're trying to invent you often invent things that look invented um, makes me think of, of uh, a painter and friend in Utah Ryan Brown he does some of these, he used to do a lot of them, he's, I don't think he's doing them as much. These invented landscapes, and you'd never believe they were invented. You, you would be completely convinced that he had sat there in real life and painted it because he references nature so well. But that's only because he's very well aware of what's happening in real life. 
I'm not there. I I struggle to invent, and it and it feel it feel real. Uh, my invents my inventions are usually like tree with a river. <laughs> you know, like I I uh, I haven't been studying nature enough to really. And I'm I'm like almost I'm almost ten years ten years into this, um, and I don't feel like I can really I can make that make that realistic feeling in nature yet. Hey, good. So y'all staying safe? Yeah, how about I just come to see how you guys yeah. doing? Oh, just doing a little painting. All right, my neighbor, neighbor stopped by to chat and as I'm chatting with him, I realized that this angle is way, way too drastic. Um, it's more like like this, so that's a good thing to change. Thank you, neighbor, for coming by. Gave me a second to realize I'm making mistakes. And I don't know if it's because I had a break or, or what just now, but... Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel a little refreshed coming back at this and feeling like a little more confident in the direction it's going. So maybe that's why it's a good reason to take breaks. Um, I mentioned this in every demo, but I kind of go back and forth in trying to decide to show a wide, a wider shot with the canvas in it, I mean with the palette in it, and then kind of cl coming close in to give you a shot of the, the painting. And I, in my mind, folks would prefer to see this painting close up, but I may be wrong. Maybe you guys would prefer these wider shots the whole time. But let me know. Leave a comment below. Let me know if if you like the closer up where you can see things or if you like the wide thing. Just leave it wide. Or like it the way I'm doing it and kind of giving it a little variety. Okay, in here is all this just kind of stuff, some cars, some RVs. I'm just going to hint at some dark shapes. I'm going to put some light shapes in there. And maybe it will read as just stuff over here, you know. Um, squinting, it does kind of do that as I squint, but when I open up, it feels a little, when I open my eyes up, it feels a little a little too simplified. Um, so we'll keep working on that, but I see the, I'm gonna call this the roof of that house. There's some dark shapes around on it. And then there's some trees. There's some bushes that are kind of red, reddish, warm. So I'm gonna look at, you know, as, as a painter, when you see little spots of color, you just think, oh yay, that's a good, <laughs> a good excuse to, uh, to put a little more color in there. And I am, in my choices, I'm usually a little reserved in, in strong pops of color. But that's just a personal, personal preference. It's a little too much. They're dark at the base. It's fine. Some of these trees over here, whoops, they have some lighter values in them, but I want them to stay to stay darker than than what's happening in the back. So just seeing if I can get some variety in there, make it feel a little more like trees. It is also, you know, early spring, so the uh, the trees aren't aren't full of leaves and green. Some of these pine trees are, of course. <laughs> See, stepping back, 
I'm stepping back maybe 10, 15 feet, I'm squinting, and it does have this feel. It has the feel of the landscape, so I'm pleased with that. You know, there's just a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. There's there's kind of some uh, some bare fruit trees here, and some other stuff. And I want to make sure I get I still give it that enough kind of wildness that's happening. one of my smaller brushes I'm gonna hint at some of this dry grass right right here in front of me is coming up it's just you know this isn't just a clean a clean hillside there's stuff popping up over it I'm being really very just suggestive suggesting all of it Take some lighter stuff and bring it over a little bit back here. Hinted a few branches over here, uh, like tree trunks. Darker, darker branches kind of coming out. Just squinting, kind of scanning around. This roof on this house is, is much lighter and brighter. I'm just gonna pop it up a little bit. And then as I do that lighter value, it starts bringing out some of these other things that are lighter as well. You know, there's like a horse trailer back here. I'm not gonna draw a horse trailer. I'm just maybe suggesting that there's something back there. Looking at the structure up here, just looking for some places to add a little variety. It's a little darker. These trees on the top right, I'm gonna address them. There's not one over here, but I'm gonna put one down here. over here this can use some work there's uh, this hillside is darker um, it's got trees on it and these other taller mountains don't so I'm gonna just hint at a kind of a darker side to this yeah, that's too dark got some little snowy areas on it I feel like it, it it's kind of working overall but it just it feels boring it, it doesn't have enough kind of uh, it doesn't have much interest in it there's not there's not enough going on for me so I'm going for let's go for a bigger brush we're jumping up to maybe an actual size 8 maybe 10 filbert and with this big brush, I'm just going to be looking at, at popping some fatter strokes in here just as elements of interest. Um, I, like, I like the structure of the painting. I like where it's going. I don't want to change any big things. It's just that it's boring right now. Um, and a boring painting is 
not something that any of us want. There goes my horse trailer. There go the top of my trees. But I think, you know, allowing yourself to explore putting in different things is going to help is going to help you find an interesting painting. Maybe you're still going to make some mistakes, but for me, it's an important important way to find find what's going to happen to find what's going to make a nice painting, some more interesting elements in it. All right, now maybe it's getting a little too much. It's all right. It's push and pull. I'm squinting, I'm looking at it. This this area got a little confusing with my my crazy strokes. Um, I'm gonna simplify some of this. Make sure that you still know this is a hillside. It's kind of nice. And then maybe put back in some of the... I wonder if I can hint at one of these actual fruit trees. They're very small. Um, I just thought it might be fun. If... All right, I'm standing a good 15 feet back. I'm squinting and still that that line uh, diagonal is it's just too too drastic. So that's one thing I want to fix and I'm liking the lighter values I just put in there uh, with some of those thicker strokes. I think a little bit more work on the mountains and changing that drastic line, uh, I think that will be good enough for this little sketch. So let's do that. I don't know what it is with this. I, I, I think that the line is fine. It's some of this other things that are uh, some of these other shapes that are causing that line to rise rise up a little more than I want I think that's better I think you know, and even as I say that, as I say, I think that's better. You know, a lot of times students or, or people who are learning, they want, they want someone to tell them what's right and what's wrong. Um, but I am slow to determine exactly what's right and wrong. I like to hint at it and kind of sneak up on it um, rather than just nailing it right off the bat. And it's just, it's just part of how I paint. It's part of the process. And so I think that that's, uh, that can be an important lesson for people to learn that, that because it's so frustrating when you don't, when you don't get it right. And, and learning how to paint is the learning curve is steep. And then once you get some basics, you feel confident and then you think you know what you're doing and then all of a sudden you realize you have no clue what you're doing and it never changes it, you just you become in you, you get into this never-ending cycle of thinking that you're good enough and then realizing that you don't know enough and uh, that cycle I'm I'm still in the cycle it's actually one of the things that's exciting for me because I hear I hear uh, some of the some of the great painters that are still alive today talking about the same thing the, the they feel like they know what they're doing and then all of a sudden they feel like they still don't know how to paint and it's that when you're really pushing yourself to uh, to continue forward in your craft no matter what it is whether it's music or, or cooking or, or anything when you're really pushing yourself forward I think that that happens you you keep discovering a higher level that you're trying to attain and uh, it can leave you feeling like you at some sometimes you really just don't know don't know what you're doing and I love that element of 
of chasing the, uh, the craft and the skill of painting. Squinting. I just, you know, the mountains are not exciting me. They feel a little too, like I was just trying to be a little too careful. Um, so I'm going to do some things a little more direct with them and see if we can give them a little more life. I'm looking, I'm looking for life. Because right now they're just boring. So there's some stronger, some stronger spots of light. And I'm gonna go for some areas of shadow just being a little less careful I have I have a structure that I like and then if I can you know put some things back into it that that make it look like I was confident in the in the first place I think that would be helpful standing back squinting neighbors are tilling their garden if you hear hear the nice sound of a motor I like this contrast better already and the edge the edge of these has a dark right in here and then this side is in shadow I like that better. Just a few areas of pretend confidence. And then let's think about the clouds uh, for a second. as I keep painting on other things. So the sky has changed quite a bit from when we started. And sorry, I can't, I can't go to the clouds. These mountains are still, just a few elements in them I think might, might help it turn the corner. We just gave it a hat. The last thing you want to do, especially with a pointy shaped mountain. Squinting, We're getting better. This just needs a few of few lighter areas I just covered too much this is where painting a big area like this is a lot of fun because you can really you feel like you have more space to play with you know this small um, is a little more difficult for me at least but good practice I'm I'm starting to enjoy this a lot more this painting okay sky and then let's see if we can be done uh, I'm not seeing it so much right now because a layer of clouds have, have kind of come in, but uh, they're still hit with, still hit with light. But I want to see about adding just a few lighter clouds. It's subtle, it's a subtle shift. I'm squinting and I'm seeing this, these, uh, the light of that roof. 
and I like the value of it, but it's a little too, it's a little too uh, bold. So I think I'm just gonna drag some, there's some dead trees, or not dead trees, but just winter trees in front of it. So I'm just gonna drag right over that. All right, so there's some trees just coming up over this. Hmm, not certain about it. I'm getting a little, a little finicky, a little, uh, you know, that's what the small brush does. The small brush is something you also have to be careful with. Let's see. might help. Okay, you gotta go. It, it, I think it needs to be masked in a little more. That might help. Just some variety around here. Maybe, maybe that helps. And then there's this nice, while I'm in the area, there's this nice tree right here which my my confident strokes covered up. I'll label them as those were my confident strokes. Now we're back to the guessing strokes. Put this tree back in there. And I'm going to give it a light side, the left side of it being hit, hit with light, which it is doing. It's just subtle. I'm all right with that. Squinting. Just add a few lighter, lighter notes in here. See, kind of cover up, whoops, too light. Knock this corner in a little bit. And this little spot of light right there is, when I'm stepping back, it's catching my eye a little more than I want it to. And that, that was enough to hit it back for me. Same thing's happening with these wannabe fruit trees here. Um, I kind of like, I kind of like their shape but there's some lighter strokes in there that are a little confusing. Squinting, stepping back. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this as a as a quick sketch and I can definitely see this going bigger. Um, so it could be maybe this is something I'll explore in a bigger painting. That's it for day three of my quarantined demonstrations. I hope you guys are enjoying these demos. Tomorrow is day four, and I think we'll paint the Sapphire Mountains. See you then.